A very good morning to Mr. Michael and my fellow friends. Today, I, Pini uh, Shrike, will be presenting on our topic smart flagging system. And uh, we are also from group seven. And uh, today, we're going to introduce so uh, regarding our topic smart flagging system. So, a uh, smart flagging system is a natural disaster which causes vast property damage and loss of lives. And also, uh, a natural disaster where dry land suddenly submerged under water. So therefore, it's uh, crucial for us to come out with an early warning system so residents could uh, could uh, take a precaution. So uh, this is our objective and uh, the proposed solution to our system, which develops a sensor network device for sensing water level through AWS and more. And uh, next, uh, let's go through our architecture diagram for our proposed solution. So as you can see, uh, this IoT level sensor. So uh, this IoT level sensor detects, uh, it, it detects the desired parameter as if the water rises beyond the actual level of the water level reaches the parameter, which the signal will be fed in real time to social network platform. And our next would be the MQTT protocol. It's a client server that subscribes messaging trans transport protocol. And uh, this protocol is so lightweight that it can be supported by some of the observation devices such as um, IoT water level sensor, and it can transport data over far reaching uh, periodic ne networks. In addition, uh, the MQTT protocol it also uh, it's also a message proto a transport protocol that's defined to associate with events with enterprise service and real world devices. So next, uh, let's go to the AWS IoT. So it helps easily and quickly connect our hardware device or the mobile application to AWS IoT core. And the four devices would be IoT shadow service which can make device state available to service and other apps where the device is linked to AWS IoT or not. So um, uh, next would be the fifth component AWS IoT rule. It specifies what to do when a rule is triggered. So we can define actions to invoke an AWS number function sent to data to uh, Amazon Kinesis and um, others. So the sixth component is AWS Lambda, a service compute service that runs code in response to events and automatically manages the primary compute services. And um, the following would be AWS CloudWatch. So this monitor service built for site reliability, which, uh, which is able to send us data to monitor the application so we can respond to the change in wide system performance. So the aid would be Amazon Simple Notification Service. So this service actually um, is a communication entirely managed messaging service for board A to A. So uh, with this, it allows us to send message to users at scale through mobile push, email, and uh, SMS. And the ninth would be Amazon Kinesis. So it's a wholly managed real-time and scalable stage for streaming data on Amazon Web Services. It has numerous functionalities permitting one to perform several tasks such as processing and in ingesting real-time data and developing custom streaming application for specific requirements. And also the 10th application will be S3 Bucket. It's an object storage service that provides industry-leading scalability, security, data availability, and performance. And the 11th would be uh, Amazon QuickSight. It's an Amazon Web Service resource that lets the company to generate and analyze visualization of its customer data. And finally, the alerts an Android phone during this process, the AWS sends alert notification to the end user when an emergency arises. And when the cloud watch senses that the reading of data is beyond the limit, then it alerts the alarm and distributes an This is the architecture diagram of our smart flooring system. So IoT Core was implemented in our project to create connection between device and AWS cloud. Uh, so this is the search IoT Core service in AWS 
management control. Uh, this is the create a theme. After that, uh, create a single click the create a single thing button to register a single AWS IoT thing. And then configure the name and proceed to next. Create certificate uh, to use this certificate in IoT SDK. So download all the certificate and public key, private key, and also root CA. After uh, that, copy all this text, uh, text, and paste into the notepad and rename with extension of .pem. And then create a policy to attach to the certificate to authorize the thing. And then configuration of a new policy. Select the certi certificate to activate it. Uh, to attach the policy to the certificate. The certificate will be shown after create the thing. And then attach the sensor policy to the this certificate. And then it shown the policy successfully attached to the certificate. And then implement AWS IoT SDK. AWS IoT device SDK helps to create a connection between device and AWS IoT. So this is the Python programming code to create connection between the device and uh, AWS IoT core. Uh, this is the endpoint HTTPS link to use in this that code Python code. I, this is the installation guidance. Uh, subscribe the topic to test the connections. So it shown the data successfully uploaded to the AWS after run the code. After that, uh, implement AWS Lambda uh, trigger by uh, AWS IoT Core to send the message through SNS. Uh, select Lambda from services. And then uh, uh, select function to create a new function. And then create a lambda with name of send warning message with Python programming code. And then this is the Python code uh, to send uh, email to SNS if water level uh, reached the threshold, which means above 12. And then connect IoT core with lambda. Uh, create a rule to trigger lambda in IoT core. Uh, and this is the configuration of room. Uh, this is shown the configuration was successfully uh, implemented to trigger lambda by IoT core. And then implement a Amazon SNS. Uh, after click the create topic in SNS, this page will come out and need to create a new topic. Uh, create a subscription to receive email when trigger the lambda. And then need to confirm subscription to receive an email. And then the status will be changed to be conf confirm after confirm it in email. And then uh, everything was successfully implemented and then the uh, can receive the email when the water level reached the threshold. Now so I'll be presenting the Amazon S3, the Amazon Kinesis 5 IOS, as well as the Amazon QuickSight. So first is the Amazon S3. So first, <coughs> you go to the Amazon S3 service page, create a bucket, uh, give the bucket a name and select the AWS region being used, and untick the public uh, block all public access button so that other modules can contact the bucket and create uh, click the finish the bucket creation process and then go to the metric uh, tab and click on the create analytics configuration button uh, provide a name as well as a prefix to enable and this is uh, done so that uh, you can enable the file to be used by QuickSight and then create the configuration so next is the kinesis data file host <coughs> uh, before it can be set up, there needs to be a rule created in the AWS IoT to send data from the IoT to the file host. So to do so, go to the rule subsection of the AWS IoT and then cre uh, create a rule 
So you to create a rule, you need a name and a description, but the description is not mandatory. Uh, select a rule query st uh, statement. So in this project, <coughs> uh, as well as a version of SQL. Uh, after that, uh, click add action in, to define the actions. The IoT will take when you receive data. Uh, select that. It sends message to the Amazon Kinesis stream. And now uh, it is required to create a new resource on the Amazon Kinesis stream. So go there, go <coughs> uh, click on the data file host section on the left side and click on the create the delivery stream button. I'll give the delivery stream a name. I'll pick the first option, uh, the direct code or other sources because it fits the requirement of our project. Then the following two. <coughs> The uh, data transformation and the code format conversion are disabled. And for the next choice, uh, <clears throat> the Amazon S3 is where the data as obtained from the AWS IoT is where it will uh, arrive at as the destination. So select the S3 button created earlier and everything else is left to default settings and go to the next page. So the buffer size used is one megabyte only because the data set is, the data that's being sent is very small and the buffer interval is 60 seconds, which is the lowest possible option because we want to, it to uh, buffer as frequently as possible. So the, <coughs> the S3 compression is disabled, the encryption is disabled, and the error logging is also disabled because they are unnecessary for the project. And then we need to create an uh, uh, IoT row, uh, IAM row, uh, and it can automatically create one false. So we just use that and then review the configuration and create a delivery stream once the details are satisfactory. So lastly is QuickSight. Uh, QuickSight is a bit different because you need a specific QuickSight account to use it. So <clears throat> uh, give an account name once the, uh, go through the sign up process. Once the sign up process is done, uh, click on new analysis and then the new data set on the following screen. <clears throat> Uh, select uh, the S3 analytics data set, which is what we created just now during the S3 section, and enter the source of the data, the data source name. Uh, select the S3 bucket with analytics data. And that's it. Uh, you go continue on and you will <coughs> uh, input the data in, and you can start creating the graph.